Hello everyone and welcome back to a new day of Road to TCG Worlds 2016. More Green Ninja action for you guys today after we got our two pretty good wins on Monday's video. And we are now up against Trax Neo with a Psychic Colorless deck which I would assume is going to be Trevenant. Now because we do not run Rough Seas our version of the deck is definitely weak to Trevenant. Um, we require a big bench which means his silent fears do a ton of damage and a turn 1 or turn 2 item lock really hinders this deck so so much. Now I do lose the coin flip which might set us a bit behind especially if my opponent gets the turn 1 lock. <laughs> we might be in a lot of trouble. And the more times we mulligan, the higher the chances he has of getting that turn 1 wallies. So, we are definitely going to be in for a rough matchup. <laughs> Especially with a hand like this one where... I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I guess if he doesn't get the turn 1, which starting Wolfhead definitely helps our case, but if I'm forced to Sycamore away two Frogadiers and the break, I mean, if I manage to get an energy somehow, then maybe I would have a chance. If I manage to somehow top deck an energy, I'm actually going to conserve my Wallies. I think my best play here is to just hold out. Okay, and my opponent just passes. Okay, so definitely best case scenario right now. But, 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 but. What do I discard right now? A Frogadier and the Trainer's Mail and get myself a Froggy? Yeah, I have to be patient, I think, here. I really, really have to be patient. So, I'm gonna get rid of the Trainer's Mail and a Frogadier, which is obviously not ideal, and I won't really be able to make the most out of what I have. And there's only one of the Shadow Stitching Greninjas. Wow, that's going to make things even harder. Seems like all throughout this week I've been prizing everything I actually do need. But I'm gonna pass for now. Um, my opponent isn't threatening me too much. But I get to evolve into Frogadier, then I get to Wallis into the Greninja, and my opponent just passes. Wow. Okay, so never mind. Now we are in a best case scenario. Um, well, second best case scenario, because if I had an energy, I would definitely be in a really good position. <laughs> Sorry, there was a mosquito there, but this will delay our strategy a bit. But I think this is the right play to play, the right way to play the matchup if you're not running rough seas. Just going for a really quick shadow stitching Greninja and doing 80, 80, 80, 80, because if you go for that route, um, you essentially trade damage output I guess which you 2 hit KO Grenin or 2 hit KO Trevenants and your opponent doesn't 2 hit KO you now we top deck and not the best card but not the worst either um, okay now finally we have our water energy so I'm going to attach to Jirachi and play the Verse Seeker for a Sycamore just in case he somehow top decks out of the situation he's in and he's able to get the luck and well I guess I could play the Dive Ball and the Froakie but no I don't want to give him any Lysander targets or anything just gonna do 10 damage and if everything works out we might be able to win next turn my opponent has been really unlucky and seeing Trainer's Mail and Acrobatic signifies he has a really, I don't know, quick deck. The Bursting Balloon I think definitely confirms Trevenant. But now as long as we get a Water Energy, we should be pretty okay here. Now, I cannot use abilities, so I'm going to attach an Energy. I'm going to... Um, I mean... All I need now is the Muscle Band. I don't think I'm threatened by anything from my opponent anymore. So I'm gonna try and get the Muscle Band to get the win right now. I don't. I do get a Sacred Ash. 
and I guess I will shadow stitching here because I do have replacement energy and if he somehow top decks a shaman um, well his hand is pretty big so he wouldn't be able to use it but it's not the biggest of deals I mean it is another basic Pokemon now all we need is for him not to bench anything and I know this is definitely not the best game one I could have shown but it's the game we got and once I asked if you guys wanted to see like the short games and the quick games and everything and the overwhelming majority you know, there's an ultra ball the overwhelming majority said they really wanted to see everything so okay it is driven and break he does have a float stone but I do have my ability so even and keeping the energy now is definitely going to help me um, he is going to ascension but I will be able to get a KO onto the Trevenant or I could potentially KO the Wolfet but I think I'd rather KO the Trevenant right because item lock is worse for me than ability lock so I will definitely giant water shuriken get myself a KO onto Trevenant allow him abilities but that's not the biggest of deals I will now bench the Froki just because he seemed to top deck out of this he might have a shaman he's holding back who knows but yeah I get my game on Trevenant so even though my opponent did item lock me for a turn he didn't accomplish too too much so that was good now our energy count is a bit perilous I guess because he has a versus seeker and he's going to Lysander so uh, that means we will not be able to win on this upcoming turn which is something I definitely was fearing because I cannot use abilities okay but I'm going to use this opportunity I'm going to get myself another Frogadier try to set up a secondary Greninja and maybe he's trying to run me out of energies but he definitely won't be able to do that um, I'm going to attach an energy to the bench Greninja break and I'm going to pass my turn I have the win next turn unless he removes the energy I didn't attach it to the active Jirachi because of the fact that he could play Team Fleur Grunt and that means he could remove the energy and prevent me from retreating another turn he gets another Phantom and that one we won't be able to KO unless I top deck yet another water energy oh boy and he had the shaman so he's getting back into this he's definitely getting back into this and the bursting balloons are really really annoying they are really annoying he even gets a sycamore so now maybe I'll regret not having used all my supporters um, Except not really. Oh boy. He goes for a super rod. So my opponent's deck is now pretty thin. Um, you would expect him to get the Trevenant next turn. If he attaches an energy, then even my Greninja will not be safe. Man, that freaking bursting balloon really causing me a lot of trouble that's the thing that has my opponent still in the match I believe and how many energy do I have already in the discard pile three okay so he uses ascension that means I'm not at risk of getting KO'd by the Trevenant but I am at risk of getting KO'd by the Wolfet I top deck the AC that means I can actually KO the Trevenant but I think a better play that was a really lucky top deck, I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to actually KO the Wofet with my ability, Giant Water Shuriken. Try to free up the Greninja from the prizes, and because he did not attach an energy, the only way he can KO Greninja, and I do get the other Shadow Stitching Greninja, which is great, is if he benches another Wofet. And by using Moonlight Slash, I am able to guarantee I do hit KO or can KO the 
the upcoming Trevenant Break. And he cannot use Tree Slam, so the most damage he can deal to me is 30 right now. He actually has his third Bursting Balloon in a row. But I have the energy and I can freely retreat onto my, my benched Greninja. He goes for another Sycamore, which makes sense. He benches another Phantom, and now I don't have an energy to KO that one. Which could be a bit problematic. Um, I do have another Greninja break though, so that's great. Um, I wish I had more energy. And that Bursting Balloon is really annoying. But I'm not going to give my opponent the satisfaction of KOing my Greninja. There's no need for me to do that. So I'm just going to Moonlight Slash here, get another 60 damage dealt to myself, yes, but I do get a prize card and I can potentially have access to item cards next turn. So all I need now is my Fisherman actually, that's what I really need, I need more water energy and I need my Fisherman. I need it not to be priced. He evolves into Trevenant. Promotes the Shaman. I know for a fact there's three Bursting Balloons in this card pile. Yep. There's already three Bursting Balloons there. So, at most he has access to one more. But since he did manually evolve, he would need a Wally Sand and Energy to have a shot at KOing my Greninja. He does attach an Energy, however. But is he going to promote the Trevenant? That's the question here. That's a really, really important question. Now, with enough water energy, he is going to promote it. Okay, so that's a bit of a risk. Um, because if I do find another water energy, I can KO it. So I'm going to attach and I'm going to Sycamore away my hand. I think it's a good I I think it's an okay play because of the high re, high reward factor that would have been amazing if I had drawn an energy but I in fact do not but that's still fine uh, because I did get the I did get the fisherman now the question is do I shadow stitching here would I want him no I, no I never shadow stitch here I Moonlight Slash because if he doesn't KO, well, he will probably KO the Bench Greninja actually. But I have the KO on the active Trevenant. I have the KO on the active Trevenant. He goes for an Ultra Ball. He will be able to KO my Bench Greninja, which is not ideal. And if he if he attaches another energy then he will leave my active greninja at only 20 hp away from getting ko'd huh so i definitely have to bench the next froki right now but wow <laughs> okay he might deck himself we haven't seen any double colorless energies but I am at really high risk right now because I might have to rely on, on attacking with artillery and wow he has the bursting balloon he gets the bursting balloon that is horrible he, I mean I should win by deck out you know I should really win by decking him out or nope I can't do 20 damage with any of my Pokemon right now. Oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna bench Remoraid and I'm going to bench Froki as well. But because my Super Rod and my. Huh. Or do I simply. If I had Jirachi. Okay. I think I need to conserve my Greninja. Let's see how many. Two Verse Seeker and one Lysander. So he will probably have another Verse Seeker to Lysander. So I'm going to Giant Water Shuriken 
60 damage onto Shaman. And I'm going to Fisherman up some energy. And yeah, he did have the fourth Bursting Balloon. But I should be able to power up an Octillery before or after he decks himself out. So, Moonlight Slash will KO the Trevenant. I will also KO myself. I have no more Frogadiers or access to Frogadiers because I misplayed and I did not put them back in my deck when I had the chance to play item cards. And now my Sacred Ash and my Super Rod are on the in the discard pile. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. But <laughs> what I thought was going to be a really, really... Yeah, and my opponent doesn't have anything. So, could potentially get KOs with um, Remoraid, and I just pass here and win. So, <laughs> really weird game. Um, very bad start for my opponent. Four Bursting Balloon definitely ended up putting in work, and I can definitely see how a couple of rough seas, like, you don't need to heal every single turn, but one or two turns of healing a lot of your water Pokemon should be enough to turn that matchup from a bad one into a good one as long as you manage to get some Greninjas into play. If you don't, like I didn't in yesterday's video where I faced Trevenant as well, then you're definitely gonna have a rough time. Now we are up against a fire deck, so even though we do have the weakness advantage, um, he, he's a super fast deck, no matter if it's Flareon EX or Entei, he will be really, really fast. So that might cause us some issues in terms of our setup. That might cause us some issues. Um, Jirachi though can definitely be useful in terms of buying ourselves some time by discarding the DCEs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the music in the background. I do start Froki, my opponent is the one who actually mulligans, and who's going first? Is it me, or is it him? Um, okay, so energy switch, that most likely indicates Flareon EX, not Entei, and that seems to be the popular version in the, uh, in the Pokemon TCG online. Now, let's see here, I do want an extra card. I get a Greninja, and we do see a normal, so it might not even be Flareon, it might be Camera of TX, but no, it, it probably is Flareon. So, my opponent really wants to get that Shaman that indicates um, he doesn't have a really good hand, most likely. He's just using all of his cards, maybe he's going to play another Shaman. He actually plays Hex Maniac, which makes no sense, because... I mean, I, I guess I could have a turn 1 Octillery, but that's not too likely. Um, Ember... Am I scared <laughs> of a Numel? Am I really scared of a Numel? I don't think I am. So I'm going to play all my Dive Balls. I'm going to get another Froakie. Actually, I'm not going to play all my Dive Balls. What I really need is energy. I need an energy. So with this level ball I'm going to find myself a Remorade. All four Frogadier are in the deck so that's really good. That's really good and I mean I can just wait for him to KO something and use my strainer or I can try and get my energy through through Octillery, so that's perfectly fine by me. He already wasted the Hex Maniac. I definitely wouldn't have played it on turn 1. I would have maybe waited for turn 2. But Twitch his or her own. He decides to attach the Shaman and passes. So I do top deck the Frogat here, which is really lucky. And here what I can do is Ultra Ball to thin out my hand. By getting rid of the Dive Ball or of the Greninja Break. I feel like getting rid of Greninja Break is better. And the Ace Trainer. I can f 
find myself an Octillery and with the dive ball I can find myself a Frogadier, it's really no big deal, all I really need is an energy uh, or something, I haven't even played a supporter just yet so I'm going to find myself a Frogadier, it's really like <clears throat> if I find anything else and I have less space for Frogadier um, I could have just wasted the card but I don't want to draw Frogadiers off of Octillery so um, it was the obvious best play, and I don't get an energy, unfortunately. I do ever get a Verse Seeker, which doesn't really help our case, and I guess I just pass a turn here. <laughs> I just pass a turn here, so no extra Frogadiers. My opponent is also having a really, really rough time. He looks like, yeah, he's going to be forced to Sky Return in order to try and get another Shaman set up. But if I do get an energy, I can simply Shadow Stitching. Um, I won't be able to get a Numel. But. Huh. Ha ha ha. Okay. Going to use an Ultra Ball. Get rid of the Greninja Break and this Greninja. Going to find myself a Froki. And then I'm going to Sacred Ash. Or rather, Super Rod. Now I just want an energy so that I can start attacking. <laughs> going to put these three cards back, obviously. When did I discard the first? Um, when did I discard the first Greninja Break or the second? When did I discard both? I, I have no idea. Okay, Abyssal Hand for four cards. There is a Water Energy so I can Shadow Stitching, which is definitely all I need to do. Um, the trainer's mail gets me a sycamore, but I don't know if I want to get rid of the verse seekers just yet. And yeah, just gonna shadow stitching here. I don't get a KO, but I prevent the shaman, so he's back to top decking, which is obviously really great for us. He attaches to Camerupt, that's his only form of offense. When did he evolve, I didn't notice. 60 and moves and energy yep so no abilities for him either which is obviously great abyssal hand fetches me a wallis but i don't have energy to even abuse the break doesn't matter i'm gonna get it into play and yeah shadow stitching is just going to be too too much for my opponent to deal with there's a victory my opponent just concedes and yeah Pretty quick video for today guys, um, this second matchup was really um, in our favor, not only because of weakness, but because of how my opponent drew, and the first game was really really tight towards the end, but we managed to pull through. So that's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, please leave a like on the video if you can, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys tomorrow in Spanish for more Greninja action, or on Friday for our last Greninja video, alright? New set is coming soon, and regionals are coming soon, I definitely want to do something special for the upcoming regionals, so you will definitely be seeing some expanded content really soon in the channel. Thank you guys and bye bye.